I'm starting a new painting and tentatively at this point it is called Head Above Water and I've got a couple of images that I'm using as inspiration. This one I'm actually going to use this this band that's coming through this water trail and I'm going to actually bring this into my texturing. I've done a little texturing here with my mixture and now I'm going to just use a bead of caulk to come down and really divide the space and help me achieve this feel possibly with a silver leaf is my thought at the moment. These things always change along the way, but this is where I'm this is where I'm heading. So I'm just kind of getting some on on the canvas and then I'm going to come back and smooth this out with a brush. So this will not be it exactly, but it's going to just kind of represent that and then I will do more to it when when I'm actually painting it. So I'll probably lay the gold leaf in and then come back with actual painting. Anyway, that's my thought, which as things work or don't work or work better a different way, that is what happens when you're actually doing it. So I will let you see what happens to this when I'm done and not trying to do this and hold a camera at the same time. So I've got this caulk line on that's become a little bit more literal than I anticipated. So I hope I've made the right choices because I think it's going to dictate where the paint actually goes pretty well. But so that's going to be my divider line that's going to kind of give me this image here. And the outline is in now of my lady's face. And conceptually, it is the waterline. She's breaking through, hair flowing. And now we'll see what happens. The outline of the face and hand is in, and now I'm going to start working like I like to do, building up the face and getting that established before I start adding anything else in. So that's about it for right now. She's emerging, coming out of the water. I can feel it. It's so me. So now I'm going to get very daring and start adding in the darks. Right now I'm in the study of wet hair. For some time. It tedious, even more so tedious than hair. There's at least randomness to it. It's highlights and they're kind of so it's uh, so I've been involved involved for quite a bit more bringing individual strands in and highlights and blocks of dark and then we have to go underwater whole new ball game well, I've got a lot of hair in here now, so I'm going back in and adding more dark to bring out the highlights and breaking up the strands like this to um, give it more of a flicker instead of just these streaks, these sun streaks. So, because I'm, I'm kind of studying this 
hard to tell, but it's kind of like a broken. There's more too, and that sort of a thing. Kind of broken, broken up bits of light and dark. So delicately doing this, stepping back and checking it out a lot. Because I don't want to add too much and then lose the light. Once the light's gone, it's gone. I can bring in some white, but it's not going to be the same, same effect. So I'm just using the tip. Sometimes I'm doing a a push with the end of the bristles to just spot it. But got to be a very delicate balance to not lose all the reflections. And some streaking I'm leaving because that just gives it the hair thing, but I'm liking all the different tonality because I used a bit of um, just Van Dyke Brown and then mixed that with blue. So I'm getting a lot of different levels of color lightness and darkness too and a little more transparent in some and opaque in others just to really mix this up and make it more of an interesting feel in, unto itself even if it's not like exactly exactly hair like it's got to be kind of a a neat pattern, neat texture. So, see how it's just more sparkly with all the different... Oh, I can see the dots. Interesting to look through the camera. You see it way differently. Cool. I've gotten this far with the hair. So there's a lot going on. I've still left a lot of highlights. I'm nervous to do anything else at this point. So I'm going to start building up some other things, some values, um, deep in the water, deep in the shadows, in the face, in the water, before I do too much more playing with the hair because I'm not really sure if I want to get rid of the white the way it is or tone it down and with these glazes that I use once you get rid of white it's pretty much gone and that's my other thought is do I want to build it up with actual white or leave it as a negative so till I get more information from the rest of this painting I'm gonna let it go so I'm just gonna intensify some of these values nostrils here and build up some of the water, overlay some areas and darken, push some back. So I'll get on that now and see where we get. I went a little far and got carried away with uh, adding in the outlines for the water drops. I wasn't sure if I was going to go there, but I think it'll be cool once I get the white in for reflection covering up the background so it's a little more stylized looking not quite like realistic but going from that kind of 
over exaggerated water droplet reflective pattern pattern in a pattern again my inspiration kind of being this effect with the very stylized water Some of these will have to be done and redone that are over these dark areas because this will fade in when it dries. But I never plan that far ahead to leave all these little areas. Try to for the most part, but things evolve and wasn't sure about water on her face. It's hard when you get something and you, you like the look of it to go that extra step with something and it could make it really cool or it could completely ruin it. So I took a chance. I think it's going to work. Well, let's just say I'll make it work. Because if this doesn't cut it and look like water, I will keep going until I get there. Because there will be a trick that will make it actually read like droplets. It's getting there. Okay, I'm going to keep going. I'm adding my visionary experiment with silver leafing this water line, this kind of divider across the page. Um, it's basically resembling that, and I'm I'm putting the, the background as the, the gold leaf, and it'll get painted over but wanted to have that real um, mercury kind of look to it. I hope it works out. It was kind of the inspiration to this piece in the in the first place. So taking a risk because I'm actually liking how it's turning out and this could either make it or break it and turn it into something funky. But we'll work it out regardless. So you can see where it's um, where the texture I put in at the very beginning is starting to to come forward and burnish and that was really why I wanted to use the, the leafing so much because it, it really does give that three-dimensional feel. I added the gold leaf or the silver leaf and and I actually am glad I did. It's kind of a cool effect um, where the light hits it picks up the glimmer but if you really get away from it with the uh, without direct light it just kind of blends in like that here at the top and then you get that reflection so I painted in a little bit over it to put some shadow and highlights where when it's not actually being hit by its own highlights and added in some um, white water highlights um, so I'm going to continue building the depth of the water. I think I'm nearing the end. I'm right now just warming up uh, the flesh tones. So pulling a bit out of the water. Uh, so her hand and a bit of her body are just kind of peeking through, um, defining the, the shadows and shapes. 
in all of the flesh a bit and doing a lot more of the definition of the water which I've done most most of at this point so now it's just kind of all these little last touches and kind of being in that place of like I don't want to take it too far and push it I mean overall I'm really liking it but I'm wondering if I went a little bit further here if it would be better but I don't want to make it worse or get rid or screw up something that I've already got established and especially with all these highlights it's hard because some things might look a little bit harsh but if you soften them they the effectiveness of it kind of disappears too so I don't want to do that and once they're gone they're kind of gone I think I'm going to soften up some of the highlights in the hairs I've kind of left it behind for a while to see how I felt about it as I built everything else up. I think I'm going to throw in some gray tones a little bit here and there uh, so they're not quite so stark white. Um, and I'm going to bump up the sky a little because it's one dimensionally blue, although I like the color. Uh, I'm going to give it a little bit more character. I'm truly in the last bits of this painting. It's, it's down to little touch-ups and, and finding that place to walk away. And the sky for me just had a, a little bit of a shallow feeling. It had really only had one layer of paint on it. So I'm going to just put in a little bit more color in this layer. And um, because with these paints, the, they're so translucent that it really can show a lot of depth with layering and it gives it just so much more interest and feel when there's more than one coat of it because you really can see through to the next and you get much more cloud effect than just laying there and the water was like that too. It's like when you can see sheer through to the canvas, not as much interest as layers and layers of different colors that you can actually see on top and over each other. I don't want this to be too detailed either though, not, you know, not too much texture or anything going on. I, I need it to be the calm part, literally the calm part, which is kind of the basis of this whole painting head above water is going from the chaos to to the calm so we got to let this remain calm and still be interesting to come to so I'm going to play a little bit more with this and this last little wave that's on top of the surface and then we'll get into a little more hair and you know, put my name on it I think I've got the sky pretty much where I want it to be in the level of not too much going on, but just enough. So now I'm coming in to the hair, into these white spaces, and just kind of breaking them up and trailing um, a medium highlight color into both the dark areas and the light areas and making it not quite so bright intense and um, also making these left spaces not quite so unfinished looking as in the canvas just showing through so once I do this I'm going to come back with white and go over into that again also so I'll get it in there and then some of this will get even covered up
So there's a little bit of blue in there to give that reflection of the sky and the water. This I've already kind of done, and once this stuff dries, it really does fade in a little bit, so. And I didn't have quite as much blue in it. So I'll bump that up a little bit. Okay. We are so almost there. I don't want to lose any of the interest that's going on in here, but just soften it down a little bit. All right, I'm going to keep doing that for a bit. Now, possibly the hardest part, declaring it done. I've gone over it with a fine tooth comb and I think I've worked out all that I need to. And now, it's all about the signature. Which never comes out right either. The first go around. And we're done. Start another one.